guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about how I managed to raise a baby in a small home. So I know I only have one child, but even one child comes with a lot of stuff and it does take some creativity to be able to raise that one child in 900 square feet. If you still wanna keep your sanity and feel like your home isn't just like full to the brim with stuff, so over these past three months, I've learned a lot and I wanted to share with you guys how I've been able to manage. So the first tip that I have for you guys is to buy baby gear that folds up. So for me, it's really important to have gear that folds up, not only for when I'm storing it long term for a next child, but for the day to day, because we have a relatively small house, floor area is really valuable and it's really nice to be able to fold things up during the day and store them away just so we clear up space and it doesn't feel Feel like we're tripping over everything while we're trying to walk around. An example of this is our little play area for Rook. Josh made it and it just collapsed down so we can just put it against the wall and it really opens up the room. I also have a baby bouncer which a friend very generously gifted to me um, and it works perfectly great. The only problem is is it doesn't fold up which really is an issue because it takes up so much space and to not be able to tuck it away at certain times of the day really makes my house feel crowded. So I think for the next child we will invest in a baby bouncer that can fold up. The next tip I have for you guys is to try living without something before you buy it. I really wish I did this more, but because I'm such a planner, I really wanted to feel like I had everything ready for when Rook came, but that means that I ended up buying a lot of things that I didn't actually need or use. Thankfully, I kept receipts and I got to return a lot of items, but save yourself the time and the effort. Try and minimize the stuff that you buy before you have your child. So things like a baby bathtub, a nursing pillow, a breast pump, a bottle warmer, these are all things that I didn't need because every baby's different and not every baby has the same essentials, you know? The third tip for you guys is to minimize the amount of clothes that you have for your baby. This one can be really hard because you don't really know how many clothes you need and everyone has their own opinions, but for me, I originally set out buying enough clothes so that at each stage, Rook would have seven outfits and seven sets of PJs so that it would be like one outfit a day, right? And that's fine, but it didn't really work out that way because the sizing on clothes are so off that you can't like plan it out to a T like that. Also, just like he's not that messy of a baby, so I didn't need seven pairs of pajamas. Thankfully, I hadn't bought all those clothes yet. And so what ended up working for me is I just have this little box in Rook's dresser and I limit myself to only having enough clothes for him that fit in that one box. So that's just his day-to-day -day clothes. He also has a section for his sweaters, one for his pajamas, and then one for swaddle blankets. But this system has worked really easy for me because I don't have to be counting clothes. I just know what fits in the box is what we're keeping. So that's been great. The next tip is for what you do with all those clothes that don't fit your baby at the moment or that they're yet to grow into. So in the nursery, we have two closets. Uh, but one is the laundry room and one is our storage closet. So really Rook only gets a dresser for all his stuff. And I don't want to be loading it up with a bunch of clothes that don't fit him because that's not really practical. So I ended up buying under the bed storage containers just off Amazon. I'll link them down below if you're interested. And they've been great for storing all the clothes that he used to wear and all the clothes that he's going to wear. We just have them under the couch for easy access. And it's really great because I know I'm keeping clothes for my next child, but I'm also not like overwhelmed with the amount of clothes that are in my house because they're tucked away and hidden. My next tip is for the high chair predicament. And it's a predicament because high chairs are huge. Like because they're so high, they need a really wide base so that they don't like tip over. But like I said, floor space is very valuable in my home and so I don't want to be taking up so much room with a high chair. Rook is still three months old so he's not eating yet but I already bought my solution which is a clip-on high chair for your table. These things are really awesome because like I said, they just attach right onto your table and they take up no floor space and I feel like it's gonna be just as functional as a high chair. I had a friend over a while ago and their baby used it and it worked out fine so I'm really excited 
for when Rook is the age to eat and we can take advantage of that. My sixth tip for you guys is to have minimal decorations in your nursery. Now I know from looking at all the Pinterest pages and all the YouTube videos, it can be really appealing to like fully decorate your baby's nursery, have a theme, have their name on the wall. It's super cute. But when you live in a small home, it's just not practical because babies grow so quick, they go through different stages where they need different things, right? And so if you fill your nursery up with decorations, it's hard to evolve that room with how your baby is changing without having to store some of those decorations away. And I, for one, do not want to use storage space on useless decorations. So we kept the decorations basically to a minimal, like honestly, I don't know if there's any real decorations in there. Everything is a useful product and it still feels like a nursery because it still is full of baby stuff. It's just not full of baby decorations. Next up, I strongly suggest that you guys find multi-purpose gear. So things like using a swaddle blanket as a burp cloth or an air purifier as a sound machine or kitchen towels as your baby bathtub. These are all things that I've found as really useful alternatives to buying new baby gear because I can do the exact same thing with stuff I already have in my house. And lastly, I just suggest you guys to remind your family and friends that you live in a small home. So I'm always telling people about my minimalist lifestyle and how I really try and reduce the amount of stuff that comes in my house. And it's really benefited me because now I don't have to react to people overfilling my house for me. Instead, people are aware of my situation and I've actually had situations where they've asked like, hey, do you want this? Do you need this? I know you live a minimalist lifestyle. I wanna ask before I give, which is so, so thoughtful and I'm very thankful of it. So yeah, that's everything. I also wanted to add that I didn't mention anything about toys because Rook isn't really in that place in life where he's playing with a bunch of toys, so I don't have any advice for you yet. But once I get there, I'm sure I'll have something to say about it. If you guys are interested in more mom advice videos, I have a video on everything I know about newborn sleep, which I think can be very useful to you guys because baby sleep and your sleep is like the most important thing. So anyways, Rook is crying right now. I'm gonna go tend to him. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.